far as budget anamorphic lenses go, this lens is very interesting. In my journey as a filmmaker, there has been one major goal that I have wanted to achieve, and that was the ability to shoot on anamorphic lenses. Now, I've gotten a chance to shoot with some amazing cameras and some amazing lenses in the process. However, when it comes to anamorphic lenses, this has been something that I've been striving for, but honestly have been unable to obtain. Many of your favorite movies and TV shows are shot on anamorphic lenses because they come with a very specific look. This anamorphic look gives you some amazing characteristics that spherical lenses just don't give you. Things like oval bokeh and flares that anamorphic lenses can produce that you can't get from other lenses. And it's for this reason that I've always wanted to play with these lenses, test them out and use them. But the problem has always been with the price. Anamorphic lenses are not cheap. That's why when Siru reached out to me about testing their new Saturn anamorphic lenses, I was beyond excited, but if I'm being honest, I was also very apprehensive. See, budget anamorphic lenses tend to kind of have certain quirks. Uh, I don't wanna call them problems, but let's be honest. Their problems. See, when it comes to budget anamorphic lenses, there's a reason why high dollar anamorphic lenses are so good and they cost that much because anamorphic lenses are not easy to produce. See, in the past, their lenses have had certain issues. Now, full transparency, as I mentioned, Siru did send me this lens. However, they are not seeing this video before it goes live. And I think that's really important to note because as great as budget anamorphic lenses can be, there are still some quirks that I want to be fully honest about when it comes to using these lenses. Now you guys know me, when I test out gear, I wanna actually take it out into the field and put it into some real world scenarios. So I decided to partner up with my friend Johnny, who is currently on his fitness journey and he wanted to create a video that is showcasing his fitness progression, which I will show you guys that video in just a bit. But to me, it's very important to take your gear out and use it in an actual production. So that way you can see what is it like using on set because the last Thing you want to do is take gear out on a professional job and then find out that it just doesn't hold up. So we decided we were going to shoot a mock commercial for a clothing brand by the name of ASRV. So our shoot day actually started at about 4.30 in the morning. We arrived early because we wanted to be able to shoot at sunrise. For this project, I decided I wanted to shoot everything on this anamorphic lens with the red Komodo. The main reason why I went with the red Komodo was because of the global shutter. Whenever I'm shooting fast paced action, I like to work with the global shutter because you're going to have less rolling shutter and you're going to be able to get crisper images. The other reason why I did this was because the red Komodo gives you the ability to do a anamorphic de-squeeze in camera. Now, if you're new to anamorphic, you may not know exactly what does de-squeezing mean. So the way that anamorphic lenses work is they actually are literally curving your image to fit your sensor. And there's literally a squeezing happening to your image. Whenever your image is actually being written to the sensor, it's being written literally squeezed. And then in your editor of choice, you then have to go through the process of de-squeezing that image. However, with the right camera, you can see what this de-squeezed image will actually look like while filming. And this is crucial to getting proper composition. See, this 35 millimeter Saturn anamorphic lens has a 1.6 anamorphic de-squeeze. Now, if you want more information about anamorphic lenses and really how they work, or really just lenses in general, you should definitely go check out our new guide over at the Creative Fam Academy. We just went crazy in depth and we actually just released a ton of new content over there for our members. Now, because with anamorphic lenses, your frame is going to be so much wider, you really do have to plan for your framing to take advantage of that extra real estate. As we started getting some of our shots, I quickly realized that I needed to get very comfortable with framing with this camera and this lens. So we just started off doing some very basic shots, shots of him looking at camera, looking away, and just getting some detailed stuff so I could kind of start getting more familiar with the lens. And this is where I actually found one of the first major problems with this lens, at least that I personally ran into, and that is the close focusing distance. With this lens, your subject needs to be at least three feet away from the sensor in order for you to be able to accurately pull focus. And if you're using it at its most wide open aperture at 2.9, I found that this was even more difficult to do. Now, typically this is not really that big of an issue. However, 
With this being my only anamorphic lens, I realized that it was going to be more difficult to get a decent variety of shots. When I'm filming, I typically like to be able to get mediums, close-ups, extreme close-ups, extreme wide shots. However, with this lens, I was unable to get any close-ups or extreme close-ups for that matter because of that focusing distance. Now that said, personally, I kind of enjoyed the challenge because it made me start thinking outside the box. How can I get shots that have a variety and have a different look, even though I can't get closer to my subject? It's for this reason that I quickly realized that if I had more than just the 35 lens, like if I had one of their tighter focal lengths, that that I knew I'd be able to get a better variety of shots. But as you guys can probably imagine, once you start working with anamorphic lenses, you kind of have to shoot the entire project with those anamorphic lenses. And so I decided to shoot everything just with the 35 mil anamorphic. Now, one of the big characteristics when it comes to anamorphic lenses that most people gravitate to is the anamorphic flares. Now, most people think of the anamorphic flares as those strong blue streaks like you see in many J.J. Abrams films. Personally, I'm actually not a huge fan of those streaks unless they are in a sci-fi film or they're in some film that has very high tech. In this case, we were shooting fitness, which as far as I'm concerned, I felt like the blue streaks would be overwhelming. It's for this reason that with the Saturns, I decided to go with the more neutral flare set up with these lenses. And that's actually something that I think is really cool about these new Siru lenses. You can get a version that has the high-end blue streaks, but you can also get a version like mine that has more neutral flares. And as you can see in this shot, you can still get those anamorphic flares, but they're just not as overwhelming as the ones with the blue streak. As I continued using the lens throughout the day, there were a few things that definitely stood out to me as some major awesome perks of this lens, starting with the overall size. This lens is fairly small and it's very light because it has so much carbon fiber on it. The other thing that I noticed with this lens is the fact that it does have some great focus gears, which is actually something that I didn't see in some of the Siru previous models. This thing has focus and aperture gears, which means you can totally rig this up into a cinematic setup. Another thing that I loved about this setup was just all of the markings on it. This thing does work with T-stops as it is a cinema lens, but also when it comes to the focus, you're not only going to get meters as far as your focus distance, but you also get feet. And as someone who lives in the States, it's nice to be able to see feet markings on the actual lens. This lens also has a 58 millimeter diameter for screw on filters, which actually came in handy because we were shooting during sunrise. I did need to throw an ND filter on this lens and it was very easy to do so while filming. Now, when it comes to the Siru lenses, there was really one major thing that I was worried about with this lens. See, in the past, I've checked out these lenses before and I've watched other YouTubers reviews like Potato Jet and many others. And one issue that a a lot of them complained about was the fact that as you adjusted the focus of the lens, which if you're filming anything, this is something that you're going to be doing consistently throughout the shoot. But whenever you are adjusting the focus of the lens, literally the squeeze factor of your frame would change. And as far as I'm concerned, this is something that is completely unacceptable when it comes to using an anamorphic lens. I am happy to say that as I was using this Saturn lens, this didn't seem to be an issue. I was able to literally bring all of my footage into my editor and apply the exact same effect in order to de-squeeze them to all of the clips. And I didn't see any major issues going from clip to clip. So it seems like whatever issue they were having on previous lenses, Siru has been able to fix that on these new Saturn lenses. When it comes to this specific lens, the 35 millimeter, I can say that this lens is fantastic. It is great and I love using it. Yes, it has a couple things that kind of draw me away from it, like the inability to do close focusing. However, as far as a budget anamorphic lens goes, it's pretty darn good. But this is just one lens and that's kind of the issue. As I mentioned earlier, you can't shoot a project with just one lens and once you go anamorphic, everything has to be anamorphic. And if you are considering going anamorphic, you are going to want to look at getting the entire set. And at this point, I can't necessarily say how good the other lenses are. However, I do hope to get my hands on them very soon. So that way I can see how they work as a set. Spending the morning with Johnny and shooting this spec ad was a ton of fun. We had 
probably way too much fun making it happen. And I definitely enjoyed the challenge of working with a new type of lens. So I've shown you guys a couple shots throughout this video of what the footage looked like, but I think it's time that I actually show you guys the finished video so you can see what I was able to create with this anamorphic lens in just a couple hours. As hard as you believe you can work, work harder than that. Imagine you wake up at three just to train at four. It's not because of the talent, it's because of my belief. My belief in my dreams. I'm never satisfied, never finished. My pursuit is relentless. ASRV. You know, honestly, I think the video turned out all right. However, I do wish I had a tighter focal length in order to get some more close-up detail shots. You know, shooting the entire thing on the 35 mil was definitely a challenge, and I would love to see what another focal length would allow me to be able to create. If you pick up this lens right now as it's just been released, you can actually get it for an additional 15% off. However, if you use code BRANDON, you can actually get an additional 5% off on this lens. This lens comes in a lot of different variations. As I mentioned earlier, you can get the neutral or the blue streak. And then it also comes with a few different mounts. In my case, I went with the RF mount, so that way it could work on my reds as well as my Canon mirrorless cameras. There's definitely a look that you get with anamorphic lenses, and it can definitely take your shots to another level if that's the look you're going after. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably a filmmaker yourself, which means you should definitely check out today's video, sponsor Wirestock. Wirestock is an online platform for filmmakers who are looking to make some extra money without having to do a lot of extra work. See, with Wirestock, you can take your own stock footage and upload it directly to their platform, and they go about doing all the hard work of putting it on all the major stock platforms. I'm talking Pond5, Adobe Stock, and now recently, they started working with Getty Images, so you can be making money on all these platforms. And the best part is, with Wirestock, they don't charge you anything to do this hard work. They just take a percentage of the sales from your stock footage. This means they only make money when you make money. And personally, I think this is one of the best ways for creators to start making money while they sleep. So if you are interested in making some additional money from the footage that maybe you just have sitting around on a hard drive, go ahead and check out Wirestock. Links down below in the description. But there you have it. Please let me know what questions or comments you guys have about this lens. Did you like the footage? Do you know something that I don't know and you can give me some insight? I would really, really appreciate it. And be sure to check out this video right over here because this is the video that YouTube thinks is going to change your life forever. But until next time, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.